Hello my soccer universe. As you may well know the Bundesliga and the second Bundesliga are not my favorite leagues uh, to watch but I always have to say both leagues are always primed for some late season drama and the same thing happened this week uh, and as well. More so in the second Bundesliga than in the first Bundesliga and because of the results there I'm again wearing Stuttgart. I absolutely love this jersey although it's easily the most see-through jersey that I have. You have to choose carefully which jersey you're wearing or which shirt you're wearing under if anything at all because it will show <laughs> quite significantly on these stripes here. I have to make a video about this jersey. I absolutely love it. Uh, so, uh, 97, 98 Stuttgart home jersey. Um, also, I am. I will do an England uh, roundup uh, tomorrow. I have been debating uh, when to do the Spain one, and I probably will do the first Serie A uh, roundup after the midweek round because there's it just goes bang, 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 bang. So um, I, I, I will see. The, the one thing I'm, I'm not 100% sure is when to do the Spain, uh, but probably you will get one soon after. Uh, this one. That's at least the plan for now. Anyway, let's start in Germany and uh, results from the last round uh, of the Bund uh, second to last round of the Bundesliga and we have that Bayern beats Freiburg, a relatively easy 3-1. Then the first um, kind of iffy game was between Düsseldorf and Augsburg. Uh, Augsburg needed to get uh, points to avoid relegation and this was already a game that really started off uh, cra crazily because um, Düsseldorf took the lead but then uh, after a lengthy VAR uh, discussion, it was it offside, was it handball and, and so on, they took the goal away and right from um, on the ensuing counter attack, Niederlechner steps through the Düsseldorf defense and makes it 1-0. Not the result that they needed, but they get the equalizer in the 25th uh, through Hennings. And then it was an up and down game. First Augsburg was a little bit better, then Düsseldorf was a little bit better. But again, Düsseldorf is a team that is barely losing, uh, especially since Rösler took over, but they're also barely winning. So again, it ends with a predictable draw. Köln in a um, not very important game, uh, makes a 1-1 against Frankfurt, they had the lead through a penalty, however Frankfurt was for most of the time the better team and I got the equalizer through Bastos. Another big result was that Hertha beat Leverkusen, that came a little bit out of nowhere, especially uh, the way things were going with Hertha, Hertha was trending down, but Mateusz Kunja, after Luka Bakio assist, uh, makes it 1-0. It was actually the first real attack by Hertha in that game. And in the second half, uh, Piontek is kind of slaloming through the defense. Again, more bulldozing himself than actually skill. Uh, he gets the ball and then it runs parallel. He wants to actually put in, but Luka Bakio comes first and makes it 2-0. Uh, and a big loss for Leverkusen in that one. Hoffenheim's 4-0 win over Berlin doesn't deserve much attention, I think, except for the result. Um, Mainz Werder Bremen was the huge game uh, this weekend. And I have to say, Werder started out bright, but then um, shot themselves a little bit in the foot. Kweissen made it 1-0 with the first real attack, but then uh, Mainz did enough to deserve that lead and actually make it 2-0 uh, shortly thereafter. In the second half, it took a while until it got going, but Werder got going and got the equalizer through Osako. However, then they had quite some uh, opportunities and chances, but didn't take them. And in the end, Edmilson Fernandes makes it 3-1 for Mainz and putting Werder in serious, serious trouble. Given how the other games are going, Werder needed to get points, if not the win there. But so Mainz is safe. Uh, Gladbach takes, care, um, takes advantage of the Leverkusen loss by... Uh, winning 3-1 at Paderborn. Uh, the goals uh, came uh, rather quickly uh, there through Hermann already in the, f uh, in the fourth. Then there was the equalized through Paderborn and Stindl, two goals uh, like right on the get-go. Uh, the the equalizer of Paderborn came, then Stindl uh, gets a penalty, converts him, and then makes the 3-1 as well. I think the penalty was kind of a contentious one, if I remember correctly. 
Leipzig with an absolute no-show in new jerseys. And I have not commented on new Bayern jerseys. <laughs> they have been playing it for uh, almost two weeks now. And I always say I have to comment on the new Bayern jerseys and never do in the video. I have to say oh, all over I like them. They have this interesting cut that the new jerseys have. But I think they look uh, in, in a way classic. The new um, jerseys by Leipzig are on the other side. I have to say weird, boring, whatever. Uh, Haaland scores two goals, one by a wonderful assist by Arena, and one in stoppage time in a game that really didn't count for much. And Wolfsburg just rolls over Schalke. Schalke having a horrendous restart. Weghorst 2, Mbabo, uh, two, Mbabo and Joao Victor make it 4-0 before uh, Matondo actually pulls one back right after Victor's goal. To make it 4-1. So with the table now, um, Bayern Munich champions Dortmunds are in. With the loss, Leip Leipzig has still a chance to land outside of the Champions League spots, but it's very, very unlikely. Uh, so all the chances is between Gladbach and Leverkusen. I mean, the goal difference of Leip Leipzig is just too superior that Leverkusen uh, could mount a comeback there. So it's really between Gladbach and Leverkusen. Uh, for the last one, we look at the next games on the next one um, then in the relegation zone we have now Mainz, Köln and Augsburg are safe so it's only who will be the going directly down who will get um, the relegation playoff spot so we have Düsseldorf 39% um, being relegated this includes the relegation uh, games and we'll talk about this so actually a good chance of staying up if, if you will and Werder Bremen yeah they have a real uphill battle. So let's, so let's look what will happen in the next uh, round. Um, Gladbach plays at home to Hertha. Hertha can't decide the Champions League race, whereas Leverkusen plays at home to Mainz. Um, I would say that's three points for Leverkusen, so Gladbach should get a point. And as for Werder, they play home to Köln, who have nothing else to, uh, to play for, and for Düsseldorf has to play in Berlin at Union. So. I think Werder will go down, and I'm very sorry for that. But as I said, all the drama that happened there, and it was considerable, uh, it was exciting to I have to have has until like five minutes to go. But what happened in the second Bundesliga? Um, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. First, first of all, um, in the re in the promotion battle, Stuttgart, who just had beaten Sandhausen five one, faces Nuremberg, who had just beat Wiesbaden six 0 and then they do not show up and Stuttgart rolls over Nuremberg, gets six goals and Nuremberg kind of rolls back uh, to the old times. Then, uh, yeah, let's, let, let, let's talk about the other one. Hamburg has actually a pretty good game in Heidenheim. For the first 45 minutes, they weren't dominant. Right after the break, Boyan Palo makes it 1-0. And then the nerves come in and Heidenheim gets in the 80th and equalizer which was actually an own goal and then everyone thought it is head headed head for a draw with Heidenheim actually having already chances uh, Hamburg really trying to get this one point to kind of yeah call 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 save because that point probably would have meant the world for them and just not lose well lose they did because in the 95th minute absolute crazy goal uh, by Kerschbaum I mean it was just a little bit like ru uh, rugby until it uh falls in front of Kerschbaumer, who makes it 2-1 in the 95th minute, the match ended right there. So Heidenheim overtakes Hamburg, as we will see, and Stuttgart, uh, thanks to goal difference, is more or less a safe promoted team, hence I'm wearing Stuttgart, I'm glad to see them back in the Bundesliga. As for the relegation, uh, yeah, what can I say there, this was also uh, Bielefeld against Karlsruhe. Uh, if Dresden and Wiesbaden, they would both need kind of a win to, to stay in and that Karlsruhe doesn't make any point. Bielefeld is up 3-0 at halftime and Karlsruhe comes back thanks to two penalties. Wiesbaden was up 1-0. Darmstadt had a penalty that the goal is saved um, but then still made three, three goals and won 3-1. Won. And uh, Dresden, there was like a red card for Dresden and a red card for Sandhausen. Dresden makes the late goal, but it is too little too late. So if you look at that table, if promotion 
is what, what we are most most concerned with. As I said, superior goal difference for Stuttgart will see them through. I don't think Heidenheim, uh, even if they should win the last match, as we will see, uh, it will not be enough. I, uh, I, I would say there needs to be a huge, huge turnaround. Hamburg really needs help there to get in the um, relegation promotion battle. Uh, and just on the, on the bottom, Nuremberg, with this minus six, they got them severely in there. They will not directly go, go down, but they still can get in the playoff, um, depending on what Karlsruhe is doing. And let's look at the table here uh, at the next uh, games. Karlsruhe plays against Greuther Fürth, which is the big rival of Nuremberg. So I'm not sure if Greuther Fürth is really going to do a whole lot of uh, stuff there. Nuremberg needs to get a result in Kiel. It's simply, uh, simp simply that I think a draw probably. No, it's not even that true. They need to get a win, uh, a win for sure um, in Kiel. So uh, that's the uh, bottom part. And then for the others, uh, HSV has to beat uh, Sandhausen and Heidenheim plays at Bielefeld. I don't know how serious Bielefeld will take it. So that is also interesting to see there. And then let's go to Austria, where I honestly didn't see much, although the championship round uh, had some quite some interesting results. Hartberg gets revenge on Rapid, who had, where the fans put a very, very offensive uh, Boarding sexist banner um, into the stadium that had to be removed, and then you know, which is typical for that fan base, but uh, yeah, they all split that you know, free freedom of speech, blah blah blah. This is rapid, this is rapid. Uh, they lose at home, and that basically, we, as we'll see, will cost them a chance for the champ championship. Salzburg has a 2 0 lead in the 80th and still manages to only draw against Wolfsburg, which also doesn't mean much, uh, which will not hurt them too much, but still, it's dropped points. And then the big winner is Lusk, who, to be honest, didn't play all that well, but Sturm Graz really, really helped with getting a yellow-red in the 30th, giving up an unnecessary penalty in stoppage time of the first half, uh, where it was just uh, at the corner of the, of, of, of the box, the Lusk strike is kind of dissecting the box like this, going out again and an unnecessary tackle. Clear penalty though. Makes it 1-0 just before the half for Lusk. In the second half, Lusk, you know, they have been mostly controlling but not really having chances to, to be honest. Uh, and then Sturm gets another ye yellow red and then you just had to play at home and had to mix it 2-0. Could maybe have been 3. I have to say it was not a very good performance of Lusk. But they get the win and uh, they're the big winners of this whole week. Because if you look at the table now, they're suddenly back in contention, at least for the Champions League spot. Uh, just a few days ago, they had only 6%, now it's 22%. They're only four points behind Rapid. Rapid plays Salzburg next. And if Salzburg wins, that's the championship for Sal Salzburg. So that also got to be said. Um, there's also, you know, the appeals process for the six-point deduction is also currently running. So um, there's a lot of stuff still happening. Otherwise, not many changes uh, in the table here. And now for the latest news, I am putting on the last jersey. So there will be last jersey in this video after all. Uh, that was the current home jersey until they changed those straps in uh, black. But why am I getting uh, with the new update? It's just the um, uh, revision committee uh, of the Austrian Bund Bundesliga where Lusk made the appeal to. Uh, I think just last week and they tried to speed it up to get everything settled as quickly as possible. Uh, decided to reduce the points deduction to from six to four points. Which means that um, we look here now at the table, Lusk actually has a much better shot at getting into uh, the Champions League. They're suddenly much closer. Uh, there is a serious difference already between Wolfsburg uh, and Lusk, which is a five points. So the wholesale situation for Lusk got, of course, much better. Uh, also, given uh, next round, they could already leapfrog Rapid, but also uh, at that point, probably Salzburg will be champions. There is a teeny tiny chance of becoming champions, but it needs Salzburg to really collapse, which I honestly do not see happening. In any case, uh, what do I think about this latest development? Well, I am a happy. I personally thought that if a points deduction, I would have gone for three points. 
my because then you would be level with Salzburg and uh, you know it seemed like if a point deduction is good I think Lask was actually hoping that the points deduction will be for the beginning of next season which uh, is kind of smart because it also means that if you have that um, since the points are halved after 22 games the effect is not as severe that's how what I'm saying. Now the reasoning behind having the points uh, deduction reduced was that yes uh, everything I did is a breach of the fair play rules and should be uh, sanctioned however it has to be taken into account that points in the um, uh, regular season if you will and the points in the playoff are not the same uh, of same value so you need to reduce it but uh, then I'm thinking why to four and not to six uh, and not to three that is the one thing that I'm uh, not quite getting but in any case hey uh, at the moment I'm taking everything as, as it comes as I said Lask has two uh, or four weeks now to uh, go to the last level uh, if they are unhappy which I'm thinking they will not wait how the season ends um, what would uh, the points deduction do uh, you know if you give points take points will it change any any anything and then they will decide whether they uh, will make uh, another appeal as, as I said it's only two weeks now left so I think we'll see about that and on the bottom, uh, yeah, <laughs> it changes every round. Tirol is now in last place again. Admira get themselves out because uh, Tirol lost to Austria Wien. Uh, Mattersburg seems still in danger, but I think they're relatively, relatively safe. I agree with the 6% there. So that was the weekend in Germany and Austria. I have to say I didn't initially think I will watch the second league conference. It was wholly worth it. This was... Some of the most drama I've seen in a long time, totally worth it. Uh, even if the soccer wasn't great, but if they're switching around, it's not all that bad. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, Wish you a wonderful day. Bye.